The now infamous debate caused the media bubble to burst. Everyone, including Biden, said it was an epic fail, a really bad debate, a train wreck. The excuses of him having a cold and jet lag didn't cut the mustard. But no one's explaining from a biblical perspective the nature of the president's real problem. Does President Biden, at 81 years old, have Alzheimer's? While it's been labeled dementia or Alzheimer's, he's actually dying before our very eyes. And he's not the only one. We're all dying from the moment we're born. Here is the scientific explanation telling us what most of us already know. While many search for the proverbial fountain of youth, you might be wondering why do we age in the first place? We actually have a biological clock buried within our genetic makeup, and this clock can only run for so long. In other words, we're programmed to die. Our bones and muscles weaken, our skin wrinkles, our immune system gets weaker. We lose our memory and our senses diminish. I continue to think we have to make fundamental changes in civil rights. And those civil rights, by the way, include not just only African Americans, but the LGBT community. He wants to get away with, get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, for the ability to, for the... We accept this as a natural part of life because it happens so slowly. But if it happened over a matter of seconds, as we saw happen in the famous Spielberg movie, it's a horror beyond words. <laughs> Here's the actor that drank from the cup that Jesus supposedly used at the Last Supper. But instead of getting eternal life as he expected, he aged and died in seconds thanks to Hollywood makeup. Make sure you watch until the end of this video to see what he looks like after just 40 years of real life aging. Here now is the biblical explanation as to why we age and die. Just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Most people don't realize that death is an appointment. We can cancel an appointment with a dentist or a doctor, but there's no getting out of this one. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. You always keep appointments. Yeah. What about point. dentist appointments? No. <laughs> There's one appointment we all have to keep, and that's with death. The Bible says it's appointed a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. How are you going to do on that appointment when you stand before God? Are you a good person? A good human. A good human? A good human, yeah. I've slipped up a couple times. Who hasn't? What do you mean, slipped up? You mean looking at pornography? Yeah. Is that a, <laughs> what do you think God thinks of that? I mean, pornography wasn't invented when he was around. <laughs> Listen to what Jesus said about it. He said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. How many lies have you told in your life? Too many. So it's another slip up. <laughs> have you ever stolen something, even if it's small? Yeah. Yeah. So you're a lying thief? was the lion thief. So it was in the past? In the past. Try that in a court of law with a judge. <laughs> I robbed the bank, it was in the past. He's gonna say, well, it's not in the future. You're going to jail. One to go, and I appreciate your patience with me. Have you ever stolen something? Uh, possibly, yes. <laughs> You're not sure? I was thinking about it, like something something great. You weren't looking? No, nah, I don't like rob a bank or anything like that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, well, God's not impressed with the value of that which you steal. If you open my wallet and take one dollar out, you're as much a thief as if you took 20 out. Can you see that? I do. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes. Do you love your mum? Yes, I love my mother. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? Hit your thumb with a hammer, want to say S-H-I-T, would you use her name as a substitute for that filth word? No, I wouldn't. Because you respect her. Correct. But you don't respect the God that gave you a mother. You've taken his holy name and used it as a cuss word. Right, and that's called blasphemy. Right. So serious in the Old Testament, it's punishable by death. So here's the question. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you going to be innocent or guilty? Oh, I'll be guilty. Still think you're a good person? Oh, yeah. I think I can change your mind in about 10 seconds. I'd look at that and know that I'm a good person. Jesus said there's none good but God. Who's lying, you or Jesus? Ah, uh, see that. Have you ever heard the Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? I believe so, yes. Yeah, it's saying God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge who looks at a criminal that's committed murder, but he says, judge, I insist I'm a good person. And the judge says, I'm going to show you how serious your crime is. I'm giving you the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what you've earned. 
And Brian, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row. And your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. That's why we die, because we've sinned against God. The Bible says the soul that sins, it shall die. So if you're guilty on judgment day, would you go to heaven or hell? Ooh, I'm going straight to hell. You've earned your wages. Now, does that concern you? It does, but then, you know, change my ways and, and try to become a better person. Try that in a court of law. Say, judge, I robbed the bank, shot a guard, but from now on, I'm going to try and be a better person. He's going to say, so you should, you're going to jail. And so cleaning up your life in the eyes of God is not going to wash away your sins of the past. Man, you're in big trouble. God's wrath abides on you. He gave you a conscience, so you know right from wrong, so you're without excuse. And I hate the thought of you going to hell. I've just met you, but I love you. Man, it's horrific. The Bible says all liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. Have you had sex before marriage? Oh, yeah, I did. That's fornication. And the Bible says fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. So here's a question. Yes. What did God do for guilty sinners like you and me so we wouldn't have to go to hell? That is a good question. I wouldn't know. You actually do know, but because you don't understand it, you don't value it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Yes, I have. So why did he die? Uh, for our sins. What does that mean? Here you are, 2,000 years later, under God's wrath, how can Jesus dying on the cross help you in your dilemma? Yeah, see, I don't know much about that. Yeah. Uh, well, let me share it with you and get your thoughts. I'll be real quick. Okay. Don't let anything distract you because this is so important. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said it is finished just before he died. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines and you plead guilty, someone else can pay those fines and a judge will let you go and it's legal. You say, you're out of here, someone's paid your fine. Well, God can take the death sentence off you because Jesus paid the fine in full on that cross. Rose again on the third day and defeated death. And if you'll simply repent of your sins and trust in Jesus, and you'll never repent of your sins while you think you're a good person, if you repent of your sins, trust in Jesus, like you trust a parachute, God promises he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift not because you're good, but because he's good and kind and rich in mercy. Are you going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, definitely. Why not? If yeah. you died today, where would you go? Based on what you said, then I should. And then, you know, like if I do the right path, then I'm going to go to heaven. So you've got to repent and trust in Jesus. Is that right? Of course, yes. So when are you going to do that? It's right now. Can I pray with you? Sure. Is this making sense? It does, sir. Yes, sir. Are you going to think about what we talked about? Most likely, yes. I Most you. likely, this is your, for, you. this is your you. forever. This is your eternity. I understand. When are you going to repent and trust in Jesus? I trust in Jesus now, sir. Ten minutes ago, you thought you were a good person. You were adamant. But then we looked at the Ten Commandments, which showed you how serious sin is. And when you see how serious sin is, then you can find a place of sorrow for your sins. And the Bible says, godly sorrow works repentance unto life. So today you've received information that can help you be genuine about your repentance. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. So you're sorry for your sins? I am sorry for this. Can I pray with you? Would that embarrass you? No, sir. Father, thank you for Brian and his open and honest heart. I pray today he'll understand the serious nature of sin and be genuinely sorry, truly repent and put his faith in Jesus this day, be born again, be given a new heart and new desires. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you have a Bible at home? Yeah, I actually do. Let me give you a book I wrote called Scientific Facts in the Bible. It'll boost your faith in God's Word. Good rule of thumb is no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. Because this is your forever, it's your eternity. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Nice Appreciate to meet you. It. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Here was the actor Julian Glover in 1983. And here he is just 40 years later in 2023. What is Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Here are three things to help you do just that. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, everything you've ever wanted to know about the Christian faith, and the Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks. These and much more are available at livingwaters.com. Have you seen our video, Atheist Demands This From God, and it's granted. You're going to love it. You can watch it right now by clicking on the top video.